We have three confirmands that we're going to be recognizing this morning, and Laura and I wanted to share a special song today, not only for our confirmands, um, but for all of us, that, that through all the days uh, of our lives, our good times and our bad times, our trials and our celebrations, um, and especially today for our confirmands, as a reminder um, through all of that to keep the Lord as the God of all your days.
Good morning. Good morning. Praise to God as we worship together this day to celebrate God's presence in our lives and uh, we celebrate the act of confirmation together. So it's good to see each of you here today. I'm Pastor Bob Rudebush and we want to welcome everyone here to First United Methodist Church. We're glad that you're in worship with us uh, today. A few announcements we want to lift up. We uh, just want to remind you that uh, especially welcome those who are joining us by a live stream. Uh, there's a connect card. Uh, if you'd just fill that card out for us, we'd sure appreciate that. Place it in the offering basket later at the offering time. We uh, also remind those on the live stream that up in the right-hand right corner of your computer is a place for you to click and, uh, and also fill out a Connect card for us as well. Here in the sanctuary, we have uh, prayer cards in the pew. Uh, we invite you to, if there's a prayer concern or joy that you have, uh, we will have persons coming around during our music time to pick those cards up. Uh, and then we can lift those up in prayer during our prayer time during the worship service. Uh, we exist here to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And the way that we do that here at First Church is that we are a sanctuary of Christian hope, love, and encouragement here in the heart of Sioux Falls. Our visitors and guests on that uh, connect card, there's a place for you to fill it out. And also then we can make a donation to one of the four uh, mission projects that are there. And so we hope that we can be able to connect with you. Speaking of connecting, our, our way that we connect with God is through our service. And one of the ways we can do that is through our night watch program. We serve every Sunday morning uh, a meal out in, uh, here near the church. And uh, so if you are willing to do that some Sunday, there's uh, plenty of opportunities for we only need two or three or four persons or a family to do that each week. Uh, Bree uh, White is our mission and outreach coordinator. We just uh, brought her on staff here and... And so if you want to check with her, she'll be in the kitchen area and you can uh, greet her and also find out more about that ministry. We also connect to our neighbors uh, through the United Daycare. The United Daycare has been a part of our uh, church community for many, many years. And so it is the mission of the month. And so uh, there's a special offering envelope in your pew if you'd like to make a, an extra contribution to help uh, scholarship some of the students uh, that come to daycare. Uh, we encourage you to give generously through our mission of the month. And lastly, to connect to each other, we uh, each year, for the last four years, have had May Day. It'll be on May 6th. Uh, from 1 to 4, uh, we uh, contract with 25 uh, mission and outreach opportunities, and it's a great way uh, through our Unbinding Your Church study to uh, invite some people with you, either be coworkers or uh, persons you go to school with. Uh, it's not just for our church. It's for an opportunity for you as members and friends here at First United Methodist Church, to invite others. And obviously our goal is to reach 500 people who will come and spend three hours in volunteer mission on Sunday, May 6th. So we hope that you will join us uh, for May Day. Last week we also celebrated Native American Awareness Day. It's a day that also has an, an offering uh, piece. 75% uh, of that stays here to support our Dakota's ministry to uh, Native Americans in our two states of North and South Dakota, and then 25% goes to the general church. Again, uh, we are grateful for the opportunities to be uh, connected together and in service and in uh, mission together. Also, uh, yesterday I went to a birthday party. Claire Vallon turned 90 sometime around in here. Claire, can you hear me, Claire? There he is. He's 90 years old. Happy birthday. It was a good uh, party to go to. I always like going to birthday parties. Huh? I like birthday parties. By the way, mine's on November 25th, just so you know. <laughs> just so you just lock that in your calendar and you just remember. So, All right, well, again, we're glad. I guess we better go to worship. We're glad we're out. each of you are here today. And so we're going to be an opportunity to greet uh, five people around you today. Um, stretch yourself a little bit and welcome one another in the name of Christ. Welcome to the Sunday Worship Service at First United Methodist Church at 401 South Spring Avenue in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 
We're glad you're worshiping with us today. We live stream our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 9.45. Today's sermon title is God's Powerful Love. Pastor Bob Rudebush is giving the message. We hope you find the worship service a blessing for your life this week. in our call to worship uh, spirit, uh, surely the presence of the Lord there's a holy hush around us as God's glory fills this place I touch the hem of his garment I can almost see his face and I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt all times before Surely I can say I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power. Gracious God, we gather as your people today to give you praise and thanksgiving for all the riches of life. We gather this day to also experience uh, the power of your Holy Spirit that touches our lives, uh, transforms us and changes us and renews us. We gather to invite the power of your Spirit to forgive us for our failures and our places where we have missed to truly be your people. So be with us now in our worship as we celebrate the indwelling power of your Spirit of your son Jesus into each of our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Please join us as we sing number 539, O Spirit of the Living God, followed by Beautiful Things.
Amen. Please be seated. Through our music, we've invited the presence of God to be here present to us. We've shared in a time of, of a prayer and offering ourselves to God. And so we now uh, continue in worship by offering the very best, a portion of the very best of our lives that God has given us back to God. Uh, just a reminder, our mission of the month is United Daycare, as well as uh, there's an opportunity to give towards our Native American uh, Ministries Day, and uh, we're grateful for the opportunities to give back to God. And so we now ask that the ushers would wait upon us as we give of our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts to God. for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful and how great your affections are for me. Jealous 
for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these evictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for Let us pray. Well, God, we, we give back to you because you have given to us. You have loved us so much that so often it's hard for us to truly understand how we respond. May the power of the indwelling spirit of Jesus come into each of our hearts this day. Breathe on us the gift and the breath of life that only you can give us. We invite the love of your son Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to dwell in each of us. We thank you, O oh God. There are many whose names and situations are on our hearts today and the joys of everyday life. We pause to offer these to you today, O oh Lord. We lift up Sharon and Darlene and Sue. We celebrate happy 91st birthday with Don Rosenberg. We pray for Jessica, for Glenn's family and prayers for travel for Paul and Abby and Jack. Lord, we are grateful that you walk with us in all of life, that you listen and hear the desires of our hearts. Help us to respond in all moments of life Respond with love. A love that only comes from you. Lord, we uh, cup our hands together to gather pieces of heaven that you shower upon us. 
And so help us to open our hands with generous spirits and scatter the power of your divine love in the darkest places in our world. Help us to comprehend what is the height and depth and length and width of your overwhelming love. Be with us as we celebrate the act of confirmation this day that as we all remember our baptisms, we too may respond by saying yes to you. For we ask this in Jesus' name who invited his disciples to pray with him. He said, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're always grateful for our chancel choir that will share with us the gift of music. I love you, Lord. Take joy, my 
Again, I want to highlight our uh, May Day uh, sign-ups. You can do that online as well as there's places to sign up uh, near the Friendship Room there. So uh, we hope you'll take time and an effort uh, to kind of build the momentum to our May Day event on May 6th um, from 1 to 4. Also, uh, we want to recognize, uh, how many of you here are mentors in schools? Anybody a mentor to a... We got a few mentor folks. Uh, I mentor a third grader over at JFK. It's a, a great experience. And uh, uh, we had an annual breakfast for mentors. And uh, lo and behold, uh, the mentor of the year in uh, that program from Lutheran Social Services is our very own Lynn Jones. So, Lynn, we want to recognize that she, uh, She uh, mentors students over at Lowell, and uh, you know, uh, the event reminded me again that, you know, all of us could give a lunch hour to help a child change their life. Uh, it's a, a weekly commitment, and so if you've not done it or you've done it in the past, I'm just uh, I'm bearing witness that uh, mentoring does change peop these young people's lives, and so uh, if you want to consider that for next fall. Uh, we'll probably have a little drive again. Don't worry about that. But uh, it's something to ponder and pray about. We just invite you to think about that. So, Our uh, scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 3. We are, our sermon series is No Longer Strangers, uh, the Keys to Living as a Community of Faith, the Church Community. And uh, today we uh, look at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, where Paul is uh, offering a prayer at the end of this section of chapters 1, 2, and 3. And so I invite you to, uh, um, uh, we share in the reading of uh, the scripture of Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit. And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that each of us may be filled with the fullness of God. And now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God, stir within us. May the power of this prayer transform our lives. Speak to us, touch us. Surround us this day. May you be that presence we seek and experience and receive. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> she had uh, went to the mailbox and got one of those, a magazine, and the magazine was entitled... Uh, living the Good Life. And in this magazine, there was a catalog of all these uh, unique uh, gifts that you could get or unique items that you could receive. Uh, for an example, you could uh, pay for uh, medals and for uh, fruits or vegetables or uh, uh, animals. I mean, there was all these kind of exotic kinds of things that usually cost a lot of money. And uh, so as she was looking through the catalog, she decided to go online as well and, and to learn a little bit more about this living the good life. And then later she was having a conversation with her husband saying, you know, I was looking at this catalog and, and I, I wonder if people can truly have the good life. And her husband paused for a moment and thought and said, well, I'm not sure, but I'm probably sure that you can't buy it through the mail or online. That you can't buy it through the mail or online. There is a spiritual dimension to our lives. 
So often we focus on uh, our mental and physical and emotional pieces, but oftentimes we ignore the spiritual dimension in truly experiencing what it means to have a, a good life. Paul, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians, is writing to a church that is, uh, uh, has many different kinds of people in it. People from all over the world, but it, this is based in uh, southwestern Turkey today, Ephesus. It was a cosmopolitan town of trade, and so there were people coming and going. And in this environment, Paul puts together a group of Jews and Gentiles into a, a church of Jesus Christ. And he realizes that with all of these different folks that there are going to be times of division and probably not agreeing on everything. So this particular letter is saying that you are no longer strangers because we are the body of Christ. We are the people of God. And though we have all these many and various differences and understandings, the central truth, as he shared with us two weeks ago through Pastor Taylor, the central truth is God adopts us. God loves us so much that God chooses and comes and adopts us in life. Last week, uh, Jen shared with us, Jen Larson shared with us that in a great image of all these different shaped rocks being selected by God and placed into a foundation of a community of faith. I love that image. That image is that each one of us in this room is one of those rocks that is fit into this thing called the body of Christ. The church as the community of faith Responding to the indwelling presence of Jesus in our lives. First of all, Paul is saying in this prayer, he's not only saying the prayer or reciting the prayer or offering the prayer to God, but he begins by saying that he is driven to his knees. Now, there are many kinds of places, you know, we teach children to pray by bowing your head, closing your eyes, folding your hands. There's also the way of praising God and, and praying to God with our arms outstretched to the heavens. But the posture of prayer that truly oftentimes touches me is when I'm, I know that it's, it's so overwhelming that I'm driven to my knees in prayer to God. In this act of humility, I recognize, we recognize that God is the only one with his overwhelming love that can rescue us, that can touch us, and literally transform us. In the prayer, Paul says, I hope, I pray that you would comprehend, that you would know, that you would understand the overwhelming power of God's love in our lives. Now, the word power here doesn't mean brute strength to overwhelm. The word power here is the gentle wind of God's Holy Spirit. The indwelling gift of God's gentleness that in that gentleness somehow touches us in the depths of our hearts and our souls. It's a mystery. It's hard to explain. It, and in fact... He's saying to comprehend, to understand is often beyond ourselves. And yet it is through this indwelling presence of Jesus that we experience God's overwhelming love. Paul is reminding the Ephesians as well as us that God's love is overwhelming and is given to each of us. Anne Lamont is a Christian author, and she writes about her own life experience. She didn't grow up in the church, wasn't a Christian. She uh, made a lot of poor choices and uh, found herself in addictive relationships as well as addictions in her life. 
in the midst of all of this turmoil, one night she found herself completely at loss. And as she laid there, she said, all of a sudden, there came a presence. And it kind of spooked her for a little bit because she said, I was in the dark, and so I decided to go and turn on the light to see if somebody was there. She said this presence was overwhelming. And she only could attribute that to being God. The next week, she went to seek out a church close to her apartment. I found a small little church, a family, a community. And she'd kind of go and then not go and go again. But there was something, this presence, she couldn't seem to let go of. It would keep coming to her over and over in different places. To finally, she said, at one of the worship services, I broke out in tears and enjoy because the presence was always there with me she got home later that uh, afternoon to her apartment and uh, she finally came to the conclusion she said you know God you keep seeking me you keep coming to me so I quit Jesus come into my life As Paul describes it, that is the moment when the indwelling presence of Jesus comes into our hearts and lives. And I love that word, indwelling. It's more than just, oh, Jesus is coming in to show God's presence of love in our lives. It is literally taking over our lives. The indwelling presence of Jesus that helps us and moves us to say, Not just, well, Lord, be present to me, but, Lord, how can I be present to you? A transformation occurs where it's not just about God and me, but it's about God and we. How God, indwelling spirit, moves us to that place of overwhelming love that only God can give to us. It's a love that we can't completely understand. It's a love that sacrifices ourselves and our own needs for someone else. It's a love that just gives ourselves away to those who are hungry and lost in this world, expecting nothing back in return. It's a love that we just can't seem to comprehend, but Paul is praying for us today that we would comprehend the height and the depth and the length and the width of the indwelling presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. I was reading an article last week. Tom Hanks is going to play Mr. Rogers, you know, Fred Rogers from the old, uh, you know, I know there might be some younger people like Fred Rogers, neighborhood thing, what are you talking about? Well, you know, Google it. Google Fred Rogers and... uh, you know, find a couple of clips because what happens is it's, uh, Fred was a Presbyterian minister who felt that television was a great medium but it wasn't touching any children and so he created this show that talked about a neighborhood, about how we uh, respect and love one another and, uh, you know, he'd put on his car- Kerrigan su- uh, sweater and his sneakers and they'd have make-believe and all of these things. His, his motivation was to help people know the power, and especially children, the power of love. In fact, he once was quoted as writing, life is deep and simple. What our society gives us is shallow and complicated. I wonder what is the good life? The good life is deep and simple. Paul reminds us that it's through the indwelling power of God, the overwhelming power of God's love that dwells within our hearts, that transforms us and changes us to bear witness to the gift of love in everything that we do. 
in our relationships with one another, in our families, where we work, wherever we find ourselves. We open ourselves to the indwelling presence of Jesus Christ, the power of love that transforms and oftentimes even goes beyond our own comprehension and understanding. But it is in those moments that we literally recognize the gift of God in Jesus Christ. So not only do we comprehend, not only do we experience this indwelling presence, but we receive it. We receive it into our hearts and lives as a powerful blessing of God stirring in our hearts so that we always choose love. That we offer ourselves as individuals and a church in love. A love that we might not truly comprehend and understand, but Paul's prayer for us is that we would understand the power of this. And the way that, that uh, Paul ends this prayer is all he can do is praise God. There are no more words. And so he breaks in and says, Now to him by the power at work within us to be able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, more than we can truly understand. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Paul isn't just praying for the church at Ephesus. Paul is praying for you and for me. That we may literally experience the indwelling presence of Jesus Christ in our life that changes how we understand the world and what we, how we live and reminds us that love is a sacrifice. Love is something we give away. And love is something that transforms not only us, but the world. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, help us to comprehend and to know the indwelling power of your spirit. Through the gentleness of your, your whispers, through the gentleness of speaking to our hearts, through the gentleness of the movement into our bodies and our hearts and souls. May we know the height and depth, the length and width of your love. We pray this day not only for our compromands who come, but may you remind us of our baptismal vows. May you help us to speak truth in the midst of a broken world. Truth of the power of your overwhelming love. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, For as people of faith in the United Methodist tradition, the Wesleyan tradition, uh, Wesley believed in infant baptism, and a part of that infant baptism was that the parents would speak for uh, the children in receiving the power of God's overwhelming indwelling spirit at their time of baptism. Within the tradition of the Wesleyan faith, we then have a time when we invite those children to confirm for themselves the experience they had at baptism. Uh, we in the church uh, begin by uh, having some time of uh, get to getting together and con having conversation and knowing the scriptures and knowing the traditions of the church, experiencing the presence of God and being trained in the gifts of prayer. 
And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism and acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. So on behalf of the confirmation teaching staff at First United Methodist Church, I present the following persons for confirmation. Olivia Joy Graham, Alex Robert Munts, and Jaden Emily Shetnan. My friends, we're going to share in your declaration of faith. Do you believe in God, the creator of the universe? If so, answer, we do. Do you believe and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, answer, we do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit as the force by which we are brought into closer harmony with the will of God? If so, answer, we do. Do you then, as persons who have declared your faith before this gathered company, seek to become one in spirit with the membership of First United Methodist Church? In doing so, do you pledge to enter in an honest and open relationship of support and nurture with your church family? Do you pledge to further the work of God's realm by offering yourselves as servants of Jesus? And do you pledge to challenge the limits of your faith through Bible study and through prayer and meditation and giving to God? If so, answer, we do. As members of First United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. All right, so we'll have to invite you to share your covenant. Olivia Joy Graham, remember your baptism and be thankful. Olivia Joy Graham, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alex Robert Munts. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Alex Robert Munts, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Aiden Emily Shetman, remember your baptism and be thankful. Jaden Emily Shetman, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen.
All right, this is the scary part. You got to turn around and face all these folks. <coughs> Members of the household of God, I commend Olivia and Alex and Jaden to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And we invite you to respond as a congregation. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, Grace of God, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish each of you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that all of us may live in grace and peace. Go in peace. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, friends, I would invite you to welcome our newest uh, friends that are part of our fellowship of faith. Let us uh, stand together as we share in our hymn of commitment, How Great is Our God. invite you to experience and greet our newest members and so we're going to ask Olivia and Jaden and Alex to head back there uh, so that you can greet them after the service in the uh, narthex area we want to celebrate with them and and uh, be be uh, grateful for the gift of 
the covenant of not only baptism, but the gift of confirmation. So we now share in our sending forth together. We go now from this holy place, knowing that we have been welcomed, loved, forgiven, and commissioned. We go from this holy place knowing that we bear God's love to the world. Our prayer is that all who see our faces will see the face of God. We celebrate new life as we go as Jesus' disciples to be a sanctuary of Christian hope, love, and encouragement in the heart of us. Again, we're glad to have each of you here, especially our guests and visitors. We invite you to stay for a time of coffee and fellowship in our friendship room which is directly behind the sanctuary. May we all go and experience the richness of spring. Yay, all right. We're going to share in our sending song, People Need the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us today. First United Methodist Church has three worship services every Sunday. 8.30 traditional service, 9.45 unity, a vibrant multi-generational service, and 11 o'clock the light, a casual upbeat modern service. If you want more information, please call 605-336-3652 or check our website at www.sfumc.org. Thank you for worshiping with us and may you have a God-filled week. <laughs>